Hello. Um. <clears throat> God. Sorry. I'm a lot of cold at the moment, so. Um. I might sound a bit snotty. Um. Also, the microphone. I don't know what's up with it, so it might be really quiet. But I'm going to do a video about um, Asperger's and the top 10 things that I struggle with as a person with Asperger's. So the first thing, um, in no particular order of what, you know, what I struggle with the most or whatever, uh, is fluorescent lights. Um, you know, like in supermarkets where they've got the strip lights and it's like proper blinding. Um, and the same goes for in offices as well, which is part of the reason why I can't work in offices anymore. Being there, done that, absolutely horrible. Um, and stuff like computer glare, and even if it's a really bright day, um, and I haven't got my sunglasses, I've got really sensitive eyes as it is, but due to the Asperger's hypersensitivity, um, it makes me kind of feel faint and like I'm gonna pass out or panic or yeah it's just not a nice feeling Um, it makes me kind of agitated as well so if I'm walking around the supermarket with somebody and I'll start like running <laughs> I'll start like running round and they'll be like calm down you know but people don't understand that it really does bother me Um, I mean sometimes it'll get to the point where like I'll have like a, a loud it's like a dull achy noise in my head and um, because it's so bright um, and I'll, I'll just need to go. Uh, the second one is noises, so like car alarms, um, just like any continuous annoying loud noise, um, and also like if there's multiple people talking at the same time, which is part of the reason I don't like parties and big social events and stuff, because I just can't keep up with all the noise. Um, and yeah, it's just really exhausting and confusing and horrible. I do, really don't like it. Um, number three is big social events and parties. Like, I've never been a fan of them. I think I went to a wedding once when I was about four, and yeah, I can just ima I can just remember like just kind of clinging to my mum and my mum being like, oh, you know, go and talk to the other children, and I'm like, no, I want to go home. <laughs> Um, and it was just fucking horrible. Um, I was supposed to be a bridesmaid at a wedding um, a few years ago and they had the dress made for me and everything. Um, and I didn't end up doing it like I just, it made me feel sick the thought of being around a lot of people that I didn't know and having to do a lot of small talk and you know putting on a brave face and people looking at you and yeah like you know I didn't know what the venue was like so you know where I could possibly go and have a moment somewhere like I just did not want to risk it and obviously because it's somebody's wedding you, you really don't want to have a meltdown or start panicking and stuff like that so it's just not yeah it's just not a good idea to try and do that um, and you know stuff like parties and that I used to be um, I wouldn't say a party anymore because I didn't really I never really enjoyed going out um, and going to house parties and stuff like that but I used to have to get absolutely off my face to do it and it fucked me up for quite a while but I carried on doing it because I wanted friends I didn't want to be on my own and that's what everybody was doing so I thought it was normal um, but you know it became apparent that I could not handle it as much as everybody else could. So these days, like, I don't know, maybe people think I'm a bit boring or whatever, but I, I just would rather not do that. Um, I'd rather, like, go on walks and go and look around abandoned buildings and go to gigs and stuff, you know. Um, I just don't see the point in going to a big piss-up, getting off your head, showing yourself up, which I've done plenty of times, believe me. Um, and then feeling like you want to off yourself the next day, it's just horrible. Um, and as well, like the come down and hangover and everything, it can last for about a week with me, like it's just not worth it. My whole routine, which is very important for me, as I'll come to that soon, um, is completely disrupted because of how shit I'm feeling. 
um, and yeah, it's just, yeah, can't do it. Uh, number four is unexpected changes to plans um, or unexpected changes to my routine or just change in general. I just, yeah, um, if something does change, then it's like, oh my God, why has that changed? Who changed it? What am I going to do? Um, and sometimes I can just really work myself up and not get paranoid about it, but just, you know, kind of really overthink about it and then probably have a meltdown over it or just not feel very good about the whole thing. Uh, number five is lack of information or knowing where I stand. Um, when I'm supposed to be doing something or I don't know, like in any situation really, I like to know what's going on. Um, and, you know, for instance, at work, if somebody doesn't let me know if I'm supposed to be somewhere different that I'm not used to going to or whatever, uh, why that is, where it is, who who's going to be there, like I, I will start to panic about that um, and again wind myself up and um, yeah I don't think people understand um, how vital it is for me to know what's going on um, I try and explain that to them over and over again but yeah I do think though like from an outsider's perspective it would be quite difficult to kind of understand that but that's just how I am. <laughs> uh, number six is hints, body language, social norms, uh, certain jokes and sarcasm. Um, I'm 25 years old and I can be a proper sarcastic little prick if I want to be. But sometimes if somebody says something to me and even if it's like ob obvious sarcasm, I'll sometimes still not get it and I'll be like, really? And then they'll start laughing at me and they'll keep doing it and I'll just end up wanting to cry because I'm like, I don't understand if you're being sarcastic or not. Um, and yeah, it's just preferable because you want to join in with people and you want to like joke around with people and that. But sometimes, especially if I'm feeling a bit down and not myself, like it can really mess with my head and I kind of feel like, I don't know, not like they're plotting against me or anything, but yeah like i'm being ganged up on or what <laughs> i don't know i can't explain it um it's just not my forte <laughs> um and with hints and body language and that like i don't know if i start talking to somebody and the, i don't know if, if they like me i won't be able to tell if they like me um unless they explicitly tell me that they like me because i'll just not pick up on it um i don't know how regular people do that <laughs> um, because I'm so black and white and I just normally you know spill the beans um, so yeah I don't know number seven uh, I struggle with being able to ar articulate myself verbally obviously stuttering um, especially in conversation um, I was really really good at writing and language subjects and stuff like that at school. Um, I don't know how I got like A stars and stuff like that because I didn't used to turn up uh, for most of my GCSEs and A levels, so but now I did that. Um, but yeah, like actually speaking verbally in conversation because you've got to be proper like on the ball, thinking all the time what you're gonna say, what you're gonna how you how you're gonna stand like, what your body language is gonna be like. Um, you know, my brain's constantly overworking. Sometimes I'll be talking to somebody, and my and I'll be thinking too much into, you know, how I'm how I'm talking to this person, and then they will answer or reply or whatever, and I'll be like, oh, can you just say that again? Because I didn't take it all in because I'm, I'm my brain's just constantly, you know, ticking away. Um, whereas a normal person would you know, speak, um, and then get a reply, and then speak back, and then it'll be fine, but with a person with Asperger's, there's so much, you know, background ticking away that needs to be done, um, and I think that's one of the things that makes socialising extremely exhausting, and then you go home, even if you haven't been drinking, 
feeling hungover <laughs> because you're just like, fuck. Um, so, yeah. Which is the next one? Oh, yeah, number eight, social media. <sighs> I really struggle with this one. And because I've been doing things that require me to keep up with messages and updates and all that kind of stuff, I do find it incredibly difficult to reply to messages. Um, sometimes it, it is overwhelming and I'm not saying that like in a big head way, like I get a lot of messages and stuff like that, like I don't, but you know when you let it build up, like I, build, I let it build up and ignore it, but keep posting stuff as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, like you have to go through this fucking backlog of, yeah, and then another thing is as well, like I hate the kind of 21st century thing of having massive full-on conversations all the fucking time and then when you actually see the person in real life, what is there to talk about because you've just had to go through paragraphs of Facebook Messenger and all that. Um, I don't understand it but that's how people communicate these days apparently. Um, nine, lack of personal space slash alone time. This is a big one. I I need a lot of alone time um, and after I've been at work and stuff like that the last thing I want to do is go out. The last thing I want to do is you know see my friends or whatever. Like I, I literally either want to go to the gym or just go straight home because you know I've been around people all day. My, I've been talking to people all day um, and I'm a support worker so I've, I've been you know so supporting people all day you have to be constantly on the ball and then you know by the time you're done even though I love my job I love it um, I'll be absolutely knackered and I'll just want to be on my own um, this is kind of difficult for relationships because the person normally thinks that you don't like them anymore or even if you've explained it to them which I've explained it time and time again um, and it's just like, no, like, you know, I, I like you or, you know, I love you, whatever, but I can't be around you 24-7, you know, especially if they're, like, touching you and stuff. And it's just like, <laughs> you know, you just want to sit and just be and just, you know. um, It just really does feel like people are up your bum all the time and it's like, leave me alone. But, um, you know, that doesn't mean to say that you don't like the person or you don't want to be around them. And sometimes it's difficult as well because you really want to see the person, but you just don't want to be physically near them. I don't know how to describe it. It sounds awful, but, yeah. Um, and number ten is um, I have difficulty controlling my feelings. And... That sounds so emo, doesn't it? I have difficulty controlling my feelings. Um, I do. Um, and the main one is if something upsets me, like I'm not an angry person, I will never get angry at people um, and kind of be violent or, you know, just come out with loads of, I don't know, like horrible names and like I'm not a, an aggressive person at all. Like I'm. A proper soft shite but when something really upsets me that is all I can think about until I'm not upset about the thing anymore and that really does get in the way of everything and I'm talking you know sometimes I can't even go to work <laughs> because something minuscule has upset me well not all the time it's you know obviously big things upset me as well but because of the way my brain works I feel things a lot more um, and everything is a lot more amplified so even if it's like I don't know I can't think of an example sorry um, I'm not feeling that imaginative today but um, yeah just the slightest thing goes wrong and it's like oh my god you know I can't live anymore <laughs> um, and yeah to other people it looks really over dramatic but to me it's like a huge deal so you've just got to ride it out, you know. 
But yeah, that's the top 10 things that I struggle with as an Aspie. There's probably more than that. There definitely is. But they're the main things that I that I struggle with, I think. Um, yeah. So I'll probably try and do more videos and stuff. Um, so if you've got any suggestions or anything, let me know. Thank you for watching.